right, all right. I can explain. Yes, it's been two months since I last uploaded. Yes, I know. I'm a terrible YouTuber. Just adjusting my light real quick. Essentially, I was taking a break, had to recalibrate, had to, you know, reflect on the last 10 months or so of doing this. Basically had to figure out whether or not I wanted to continue doing it. Obviously I decided to do so because I'm here right now with you guys. But essentially, your boy had to take a little break, had to do a little bit of life reflection, but I decided that I'm gonna keep on doing this thing for y'all. Keep on dropping this content. But anyways, you guys saw the title of this video. Today is the top signs of an inexperienced programmer. These are all mistakes that I made as I was up and coming as an engineer. And I wanna share with you all some of these things that you should not be doing if you are writing code. With that being said, let's get into it. So like I said, we're gonna be getting into the signs of an inexperienced program. The first thing on my list of things not to do is to not modularize your code. Modular code is essentially code that is separated where each behavior is separated into an independent module. For instance, let's say I had an application. I was building an app that would give my user a list of grocery stores within a 10 mile radius. What are some of the modules that would be contained within this app? Well, I would have a data fetching module of some sort that would return me the grocery store, whether it be this be from a remote API or a local SQLite database or anything like that. This module would expose an API of a method that would give a list of grocery store objects asynchronously. Now, where's the data model going to live? The data model will live inside of the data module. This will be basically a module for all of our data models. We may need a module for managing and getting the user's location, given that we need to display grocery stores within a 10 mile radius of our user. And then we would obviously have our UI module as well. Our UI module will be responsible for displaying our grocery stores to the user in whatever fashion is necessary. Essentially, all these modules would all play together. Now, what is the benefit that we gain from modularizing these things? For instance, in our data fetching module, we have the method that gives us a list of grocery stores asynchronously. Given that we know what the API is, we can start building for this already. We also know what our data model looks like. So for instance, let's say I was the engineer that was working on the UI module. I can go ahead and start using these APIs right away, even before we figure out the details of how exactly these modules are gonna work. So the more important thing here is that these modules expose the what, not necessarily the how. It doesn't matter where I'm getting the grocery store list from, given that I'm meeting the requirements that I'm fetching grocery stores within a 10 mile radius of the user. Let's say the engineer that's working on data fetching module decides all of a sudden, let's say they were using a SQLite or local database that is on the actual device itself. We pre-populate this database and then the manager comes in for that data fetching team and it says, hey, there's this new API for grocery stores. It's a free API and they update their list every month. And it also has every grocery store in the world right now. So that means that any new ones that are added, we don't no longer have to maintain that local database. At that point in time, the engineers that are working on that data fetching model can decide, hey, we're gonna use this remote API now. Do you guys understand what I'm saying here? Basically, because we have modularized the behavior, we took the behavior of the application and we separated into individual modules. Now these modules can be worked on in parallel. They are independent of one another, essentially. So modular code is easily debuggable. It is also easy to work on in parallel. So that's why modular code is good. Now, the next thing is not writing unit test. Now, some of you may be asking, Wayne, what the hell is a unit test? A unit test essentially is a way to test the smallest component of your software, whether that be a method, if you're using object oriented, pro oh, goodness gracious, boy, can you talk? Anyways, in object oriented programming, a unit would be a method. So essentially a unit test is a way for us to test this method to make sure it does what it should be doing. A unit usually has one or more inputs and it usually has just one output. For instance, let's say I had a unit or method that was responsible for adding two numbers together, then returning the result of that. A unit test may look something like this. I would have a method that would add the two integers together and then return the result, right? If I needed to test that behavior, I would maybe add a method, and this is ghetto. This is a ghetto unit test, guys. And essentially though, we have a test add method. Test add will just add a couple integers together or use add a few times, and it will assert the results. Then since I'm writing in Java, let's just say we publish static void main, and then we test add. If it does not return true, 
then I know somebody broke the test. And then at that point, the app does not compile, it crashes immediately, whatever. At that point in time, let's say an engineer came in and they inadvertently changed that plus sign to a minus sign. Now I know immediately that my ad method does not work anymore. And I'm like, hey, what went wrong? What changed? We need to fix this right away. What benefit do we gain from this? The main thing is that we caught the fact that the app was broken or the software was broken a lot sooner. And the sooner that you catch issues, the less expensive they are to fix. So write those unit tests, guys. Now, what's next? We got our unit test. We figured out that we need to modularize our code. What else is there, Wayne? Well, lack of code styling is another one that I noticed. There are plenty of examples out there for good code styling given a certain programming language. But bottom line is that consistent code styling makes your code more readable. It makes it easier for me to take a look at it and see what everything is, the way you order things. So all static and final variables at the very top of a class, things like that, guys. Again, it's very subjective, but at the same time, it is something that you gain as you get more experience. You kind of understand this is the best way to kind of style this. It looks good. It's easily readable by other engineers and I'm not making anybody's life any harder than it needs to be. And it just looks nice when code is styled correctly. That means proper indentation, tabs, all of that stuff. I usually don't get into the details of things like that because I don't think they matter. Obviously the code is still gonna operate the same regardless of how you style it, but it's just one of those things that kind of helps the rest of the people on your team. And if you have a GitHub project, it makes your code more readable to others. Understand? Now I know I'm getting into y'all. You know, I'm not trying to give y'all a hard time here, but we got a couple more that I'm gonna throw y'all away. And if you're guilty of these, I've been guilty of them at some point in time. So it's all good. We just here learning, baby. But anyways, the next one is bad methods and functions. What do I mean by that? It can mean side effects within your methods. That means a method that does something that I didn't expect it to do. For instance, if we take our example of the ad method that I had in the previous example, let's say this ad method inadvertently just did some random ass shit like stored the ad value to a database or a local database within the, within the actual device. I had no idea. I thought I was just adding two numbers. Why am I storing things now? Also, I'm not really a fan of methods doing more than one thing. If you have a method that has a single responsibility, that's a very independent module. Also makes it easy to unit test. Make sure you keep your methods concise. Make sure you keep them accurate and keep them clean, guys. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I know, I know, you're probably like, goodness gracious, I've done every single one of these. But it's no problem though. But I got one more for y'all. And this is one that, ooh, yes, I saved the best for last. And this is over-engineered code. What the hell does that mean? How do you over-engineer something? It's basically when you over-complicate it. You take basically the, the most complex tool to solve the simplest problem. For instance, let's say you guys started reading Head First Design Patterns. Very good book, by the way. If you wanna learn about architecture, I'll throw a link in the description if you guys are curious what that is. But bottom line is like, you might have read this book and said, oh, I wanna use the latest design pattern. I wanna use the observable pattern so badly, but it might not make sense for what you're actually building. My motto when it comes to programming is the simplest solution to the problem at hand. No more complex than that. And that way, when another engineer comes in and they have to debug your code, they're actually able to read it. They're actually able to track down what the behavior is actually doing. When you have the abstraction layer upon abstraction layer upon abstraction layer, and then you got the thing that manages all those abstraction layers, sometimes you just can do too many things. Bottom line, keep it simple, guys. Use whatever you need, the architecture that makes most sense for solving the problem that you are trying to solve. I know it's cool to use the latest, the latest architecture pattern. I know it makes your code look really nice. You get to show off your chops, but at the same time, it's not about showing off. It's about getting the job done and getting it done in a way that is maintainable, it's debuggable, it's testable, and that other engineers will not be pissed off because they gotta look at your shit and figure out what the hell is going on. With that being said, I know I gave it to y'all this one. I had to come back with a bang. I had to give y'all some real value. These are all mistakes I've made. I made every single one of these mistakes as I've been learning as an engineer. That's the thing is we're always gonna be making mistakes, but mistakes are the best teachers. And that's why I can make this video for y'all and share these tips with y'all. If you enjoy this one, be sure to hit that like button. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let me know down in the comments below what kind of videos y'all would like to see as well. Maybe there's something I have not covered. I'm always looking for new content ideas and that is really helpful for me. Again, if you like this video, be sure to share it with your friends if they're interested in becoming programmers or software for engineers and with that being said i will see y'all in the next one peace
Thank you.